Hi there, survivors. A new week brings a new episode of The Garage. It's the 40th episode, a kind of anniversary. To celebrate such events, people usually do something special. Today's episode is dedicated to the new mode which many wanted to see in Crossout. Let's get to business. The wait is over. One of the most popular modes which has forever changed the preference of players. Hundreds of requests from you. A bright, tense and memorable combat where the strongest and the luckiest survives. Battle Royal has come to cross out. The ruins of an industrial complex not far from the highway in Red Rocks have long been known in the wastes. Dozens of buildings, mountains of twisted rusty iron, skeletons of permanently frozen mechanisms. All this initially attracted the attention of survivors hoping to find something useful. But almost all who went there disappeared without a trace. Here. The laws of nature have become distorted and the place has become the center of sandstorms. Distracted travelers instantly become victims of the deadly element. Weather anomalies boost sand and air to crazy speeds, making it feel like sandpaper. Transport caught in a storm survives for several moments before it turns to dust. But not the weather anomalies and not the treasures of past eras have made this area truly famous. The fact is that this is where the Royal Playground is located, the place for bloody entertainment. If someone tried to describe Kenneth Ratking Parish in one phrase, it would most likely be something along these lines. He creates controlled chaos, one of the most dangerous survivors. Gifted with a sophisticated mind and strong intuition, he does not seek to be at the center of events. The greatest pleasure for the king is to create chaos and watch as it develops, drawing as many people as possible into the bloody mess. Battle Royale became the embodiment of Kenneth's life philosophy, the focal point of all his secret desires. Together with his assistants, he created Playground, found the first person to participate in his insane entertainment, and then took on the role of an observer and an excited fan. His passion for creating and observing chaos is something akin to pyromania. The aim is not to burn as many people as possible, but to see how it happens. A a community instantly formed around Battle Royale with sweepstakes and gamblers. Kenneth did everything to enable as many spectators as possible to share the chaos created on the playground. And pretty quickly, this show became famous and popular in the wastes. Several dozen desperate raiders are put into special buggies which, according to rumors, were constructed by the Rat King himself. These light cars do not carry any weapons. It is scattered in the form of modules throughout the playground. Here is what the participants have to do. Survive the longest in the buggy. The winner can only be one of them. The weather anomaly won't let you sit in one spot and wait, randomly sweeping the polygon with clouds of sand, deadly for everyone who gets in them. The roar of engines sounds in unison with howling wind. There can only be one winner in this chaos. Crazy technical solutions allow you to select and mount modules on buggies on the fly, which means that the configuration of each enemy is unknown and is constantly changing. Participants of the battle have to rely solely on their instincts and luck, closely monitor possible opponents and signs of a sandstorm in order to get the title of Battle Royale Champion. The best type of entertainment in the wastes is for those who have given in to madness so much that the surrounding world seems boring. Come to the Rat King, tell your friends about the Battle Royale, if, of course, you're lucky enough to return. We remind you that the developer's blog series tells the players about preliminary plans for the development of the project. The final version may differ from the changes described above. See you in the wastes! How many players may participate in Battle Royale? Up to 32 survivors may fight in one battle. What's the engagement time? The mode has been created with the account of cross-out gameplay specifics. This is why the fights are moderately short, 8 to 10 minutes on average. 
I'm not familiar with the battle royal concept. What's the idea behind? Players appear on the battlefield with a primitive ride of the same configuration. There even is no weaponry in the beginning. You have to pick up additional modules right in the arena. The map itself is quite big, but the safe zone is gradually decreasing what with approaching sandstorms. Players are forced to constantly retreat and eventually find themselves on a puny patch of ground. The last one to survive is the winner. What's the map like? It's a quite bumpy area, combining plateau, mutilated ride frames, and abandoned buildings. Red Rocks is the biggest unique map in Crossout as of today. It's currently the only available map for this mode. Will my favorite tactics be applicable for Battle Royale, or should I adjust? It depends on the tactics, but most probably not. As in any competition with equal input, like the chosen melees or big black scorpions, you have to proceed from the initial conditions. A lot depends on chance, reflexes, and the reaction speed. How to improve the ride to get the advantage? Get the modules scattered all over the place. Those are red flagged. This is the prime pledge of victory. The number of improvement spots is limited. That's why sometimes you have to make a choice. You can also get bullets and repairing kits as valuable cargo. Please keep in mind that you can't shoot off the details from transport in Battle Royale mode. By the way, if all the boxes have already been taken, while you were still familiarizing yourself with the arena, don't get discouraged. From from time to time, the Rat King throws up something new. Does the sandstorm cover the area randomly? Yeah, the front always moves the same, from the borders to the center. But the disposition of the safe zone itself differs with each fight. You end the battle in different places. Watch those on the map carefully. Any advice on the tactics? Go easy on camping. First, there are very few 100% safe covers on the map. Second, the mode itself is very dynamic and doesn't imply long pauses. The best way is to play quick and aggressive. This doesn't mean, however, that there are no covers. There are buildings, blocks, and even tunnels. Nail the enemy to the wall when the arena is contracting. When the sandstorm is coming, all the players start moving to the safe zone and willingly or not, drop their guard down. This is a good moment to ambush someone. If you've come to the point earlier than anyone else, you can keep an eye on them from the safe side of the border. Others will come soon. There's no other way. At the same time, fighting on the border from the side of the danger zone makes for misery. The skirmish will linger. You'll forget Forget about the threat and the heat of the fight, and the sandstorm will take you, both you and the enemy. Always look for modules. You not only need to boost your ride, but also make sure that the enemy gets fewer bonuses, bullets, and repair kits. We'll wrap the episode up with the questions from our players. Not about the battle royale, but still very important ones. Just out of pure curiosity, will the first player who gets to the level 100 of any faction receive any reward? Quite frankly, there were no such plans, but the idea is interesting. We'll think it over. This one's about new raids. They've become longer, but the season missions have not been corrected. Are there any plans on remaking missions and rewards? Of course, anything can change, both the missions and the prizes. We're currently studying the statistics and getting ready to make a decision on how reasonable it might be. Well, that's it for today, survivors. Fight, train, design, and trade. See you in a week right here in the garage. Or tell your friends about the show if you like it, and leave your comments. We're always ready to hear you out. So long for now.